Hello, it is Wednesday, September 28th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Wednesday puzzle today, so perhaps a little bit of a step up in difficulty from our Monday and Tuesday puzzles. Still with a theme, of course, and um, this themed edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Gabor, Lewis Williams, and, as always, the inestimable Hood Monster, the invaluable Timothy Mark, and the indomitable Shillmaster. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for their generous support of this channel, keeping this series going. Thank you so much to you and all of my benefactors, and to everybody who has backed the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for which you will receive all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. And if you'd like to join the ranks of the benefactors to get the Daily Solve official mug or any other uh, level to get access to all those videos, you can join that at patreon.com slash daily solve. And there's a link in the description field underneath the video where you can also find a link to the Daily Solve Discord chat server, a uh, nice friendly community you can also join. And do subscribe to the videos, do subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the series, and uh, like the videos, tell a friend, all of those sorts of things. So, Shall we move on to the video itself? I think we shall. This is, as noted, a Wednesday crossword. It was constructed by Jeff Stillman, who I think has done about half a dozen puzzles for the New York Times, and it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's get on with it, shall we? We will start solving now. Coveted Michelin designation. So Michelin, presumably this is not referring to the company's tires, but rather it's a esteemed restaurant guide which awards stars, zero to zero to three stars to restaurants at rates. Uh, to wrap up is to what up? I don't know. Um, so the up in, uh, the reason I said to what up is because the uh, parenthetical up there means we're going to apply the up also to the answer and it will make it match a bit more cleanly. So it'll be, oh, sew up maybe. If we're going to, you know, wrap up a problem, we're going to sew this up. We're going to finish it up. There we go. And and as I said, you can uh, to sew up, to wrap up. The up applies to both. Okay. Blank chi, tai chi, which is a, is it a martial arts or a sort of exercise practice or is it kind of both? I think it's an exercise thing that maybe shares qualities with martial arts. Not sure. Let's move on. In which crossing one's fingers makes the letter R in brief. Um, I don't know this for sure, but I suspect it's American Sign Language, ASL. And no blank. What Mary Tyler Moore is to Dudley Moore. No relation, presumably. So there we go. Not related, despite the shared surname. Um. If something mitigates something else, it eases it, perhaps. It eases the problem, mitigates the issue, eases the issue. Fargo actor. Um, so William H. Macy was in the Coen Brothers film Fargo, which is an, an absolutely excellent film. William, oh. Maybe it's just William Macy. <laughs> I've, I don't know that I've ever in my life, actually, strangely, heard William H. Macy referred to as William Macy. I wonder if early in William Macy's career, there, there was another now rather lesser remembered actor of the name William Macy, which prompted our William Macy to, uh, to include the H. That does seem to be how that often happens. Um, but let's see. Large storage site, silo. I mean, I do think this is going to be the answer. It's just, it's, it's, uh, there's, there's something in it that's tweaking my, my brain. It's a strange thing. Where Igbo and Kinuri are speaking. Um, I mean, I guess this is Africa just in general, as opposed to a particular country. Um, is Igbo speaking in, spoken in Ghana, I believe? Um, But I think it just means Africa, the the continent. And uh, okay, so here we have side words. Are side words what you sigh? Ah, me, perhaps in a in a sort of uh, melodramatic way, I suppose. 
blank the room. You could read the room. You could pick up on uh, the general attitude present. Quinoa or oats for short? Quinoa or oats for short? What are these things for short? They're, I don't know, staple, staple crops or something? Uh, not really seeing it. Sorry. Let's look at this. Closer to the finish line, say. Ahead. If you're in a race and you're closer to the finish line, you're ahead of the other competitors. Breakout caused by a sweaty uniform, perhaps. Sorry, I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's probably obvious. Um, oh, here we have... Oh, was this... Oh, right, I didn't... Right, this was being pointed to by the revealer, but there was no other thematic information in the actual clue. And similarly here, I did the thing I always do. I started reading the wrong highlighted clue. Anyway, this is Mad Magazine symbol. Right, this is Alfred... Oh, oh, it's that we're removing middle initials from famous names. That's what's going on. So that wasn't, I thought this was just going to be a case of not enough space in the grid or something, but no, 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 it's, it's, it's pneumatic. Is it Alfred Newman, I think is the, was the sort of mascot character of Mad Magazine? Alfred R. Newman, maybe? Alfred H. Newman? Alfred, something like that. Um, so this will be, so what does this say? Here's our revealer, and it says, con con once again, I started looking at the wrong one, contract directive or a hint to what's missing. Oh, initial. Gone, initial. I'm not sure. I mean, let's let's check the crosses and see if, if my guess about initial is correct. Idiosyncratic behavior, maybe a tick. You have some kind of nervous tick, a bit of idiosyncratic behavior, but you know, behavior that's particular to you. Good place to wallow could be a sty, a pig sty. Spectrum or Xfinity for short. Um, ISP, internet service provider. Now the or here, remember that it means this isn't going to be a plural answer, even though there are two examples in the clue, because we're only referring to either one or the other of them. Growth under the skin could be a cyst, and marble material could be agate. Okay, so the initial does look does look completely correct. DC dealmaker could be a, a Paul, a politician for short. Paul for short. An easy mark is a sap, someone who's easily duped. A patsy. Accord competitors. Okay, well, this might have been less obvious with the uh, without the crosses, but with the crosses, this looks like Camrys, which so this is referring to. A model, a model of Toyota car. So Toyota Camry, uh, a competitor to a Honda Accord. So two models of cars, as opposed to Accord, meaning an agreement or, or something like that. Actually, could be a contract that you sign, in fact, you initial. Okay. Oh, quinoa or oats for short. It is, each of them is a carb. There we go. Breakout caused by a sweaty uniform. Oh, I see. Back knee. Okay. That's not a word that's in my sort of daily vocabulary. So no wonder I didn't think of it, but it means, I guess it means acne on your back. I mean, it's portmanteau, presumably that's as straightforward as that. Um, so there we go. All right. Is shoes gray, say, dyes? And wife in Spanish is esposa, I would think, for spouse, for the, the, the feminine version of spouse. Um, proof of purchase letters are UPC, Universal Product Code, I think. Um, you know, they go on the bar, they go on a barcode. Site with tech reviews could be CNET, which I think is, actually, I don't know, what does that say? Computer, the computer network, probably, probably something like that. You know, it started in the 90s, and that's sort of all you needed. Um, if you were having a website about computers in the 90s, I guess, the computer network, why not? Recent arrival. It looks like this will end in E, doesn't it? Ch oh, okay, that, that works here. Chicago to Miami direction uh, would be east by southeast or south by southeast. Probably south by southeast. I don't think Chicago is far enough west for it to be the other way around. Let's try that. 
BTS's what on earth? BTS's V Suga and R M E G. Um, so BTS, that's a uh, um, that's a Korean pop band. Are these the pseudonyms of members of the band? Are they songs or albums? Why can't I? Why can't I infer this from what's already in the grid? That's infuriating. Um, oh, aliases, aliases. Yes. Okay. That it, it is. These are names of members of the band, presumably. Okay. So there we go. And then six pack unit would be a can, perhaps. It simply put a six pack of soda or beers or something like that. Oh, so a recent arrival could be a neonate. Yep. So it would be you know, a recent arrival in the sense of a birth, I think, as opposed to, I was thinking of it, someone who's recently arrived on the scene in a, in a more general way. And of course, that's a reminder to not get ever too stuck into a particular sense of a word in a definition, because um, often you're being intentionally misdirected, but sometimes you simply misdirect yourself inadvertently. Shout of support could be ole, especially at a football match, for instance. And an Italian pronoun could be mio, as in my, for instance. Does that work? Yeah. Not standing in an open field during a lightning storm, say, is simply common sense. So there we have that. Word that commentators may extend to five or more seconds. Oh, goal. So that matches extremely well with the ole. Those are both things that you could imagine being uh, loudly extended at a football match. Okay, sounds of satisfaction. Oz, I, guess, I mean, is it as simple as Oz? Probably, that's a very crosswordy kind of fill there. Just that little bit of onomatopoeia or whatever it is. Gave the okay is let somebody do something maybe? Oh, initial here. Why is that a hint to what's missing? Init oh, are those the are those the letters? Is it going to be, is it is this Alfred E. Newman? H. E. R. E. Is the next person going to have an? I'm sorry if this is not what it is, and I'm, and I'm sort of just inventing something that's not going to end up being in the in the puzzle. But that's, I wonder if that's what it is. Um, pioneering journalist who helped expose McCarthyism, uh, Murrow, Edward R. Murrow. So indeed. The R. Oh, that's really great. Edward Murrow. And then who's this one? Rodent with a restaurant chain. <laughs> so that's Chuck Cheese. Boy, that sounds strange when you say it that way. Chuck E. Cheese. It's the, uh, oops, nope, not the E. Sorry. Um, that is the sort of children's pizzeria consisting of arcade game machines and uh, animatronic musicians, basically, sort of animal animatronic musicians. I don't know if they still have those. I don't know if they still have those or the, or the restaurants, to be honest. But um, but that's what it is. Wow. So indeed, we had initial H-E-R-E, -E, William H. Macy, Alfred E. Newman, Edward R. Murrow, and Chuck E. Cheese. What an incredibly strange and arbitrary theme. I mean, I don't object to it. I, <laughs> I was just, it's funny, I was just thinking last night, actually, specifically. I think you know, you <laughs> to get a crossword in the New York Times paper, I suppose, you, you, I think there is a premium put on originality of theme, meaning a theme that hasn't been done quite a few times before. So you end up, I think, with these incredibly odd and arbitrary things. I mean, there's, there's absolutely nothing that connects William H. Macy, Alfred E. Newman, Edward R. Murrow, and Chuck E. Cheese, except that each of them is known by a name that includes a middle initial. Uh, which can then be taken out to spell here, which is not, you know, that's completely arbitrary. Um, and there's a whole puzzle constructed around it. What an odd thing. Um, but anyway, it worked out and I guess it served its purpose because I was amused by it, as you can tell. So there we go. And I got some extra um, words in the grid. So let's finish this off. Sparkle. Oh, I don't know. What is that? Margarine, whose ads once, once featured 
a talking tub. I'm not sure about that either. What about this reactor oversight organization? Um, I don't know. Atomic. Oh, I don't know. I would have assumed it was the Atomic Something Committee, but I don't know what that R is, so maybe I'm on the wrong track. Pirate chant opener. Yo-ho. There we go. At least that's something. Yo-ho, yo-ho. Um, flea market sites are stands. You could have stands at a flea market. And my word, I say, this is a, this is a good example of matching tone in the crossword in the sense that this exclamation, my word, matches very well the tone, kind of who you could imagine saying the actual answer and in what circumstances. My word, I say, they very much match up. And that's generally how exclamations are clued. So it's, it's good to think of it in that way. Bird in the crow family, a daw, like a jackdaw, something like that. Part of CBS, so this means part of CBS, not part of CBS, the organization, the company, but rather part of CBS, the actual initialism here. So um, Columbia Broadcasting System, I believe, is the full name of CBS. So the S would be system, and we are, in turn, abbreviating that word. So that is only S-Y-S. What's the latest? Any news? Slicker, e.g. Uh, a rainwear, so you could have a, a, a rain slicker, you know, sort of waterproof Outer, outer garment. Place to get a date, maybe. An oasis, maybe, in the desert. There could be a, uh, uh, a tree from which you could uh, pluck a date, I suppose, uh, in the desert. And obviously, this is a bit of, of misdirection because you're thinking of getting a date in a romantic sense, but no. Um, como es blank Spanish for how come? Como es eso? Esa, eso, esa. It'll be one of those. Easy win, a route perhaps, so como es eso, how come? And then kind of card, and maybe it's not route, maybe it's romp. Sorry, that was a bit presumptuous of me. So a SIM card goes in your, in your phone, in your mobile phone. And then a psychic's claim is ESP, extra, psychic claims to possess extrasensory perception. So there we go, okay. Team that signed to join the Big Ten in 2024. Oh, wow, this is really up to the minute. Well, it's a University of California school. I don't know which one. I mean, the famous sports UC school is UCLA, but there's also um, UC Santa Barbara, UC Santa Cruz, UC San Diego. Um, I went to a UC school. I went to UC Berkeley, which would not fit in this answer, but as a result, I'm pretty familiar with the University of California system, but I don't know which of them this is. To ponder is to muse, and oh, that's that margarine thing. Casual greeting. What about this makeshift ad hoc? You could sort of form an, an ad hoc committee, a makeshift committee, I guess, to serve a particular purpose right this moment. Part of a foot, an, the arch, arch of your foot. And casual greeting. Hmm, something here looks strange. Ye oh, yellow Teletubby with a curly antenna. I was going to say this AA looks strange, but I'm entirely prepared to believe that a Teletubby's name could have two A's consecutively, but I don't know what it is. Uh, what about this one? Blank mode. It could be a la mode, used in English often to refer to... Um, Serving ice cream with a with a slice of pie um, on Sunset Boulevard. Say, well, Sunset Boulevard's in L.A. So if you're on Sunset Boulevard, you're in L.A. I suppose in Los Angeles. And Psalm beginning a silent P. According to, so you could say according to the instructions per the instructions. And number after due tre three two due for two and tre for three. Bill blocker could be nay, as in voting yay or nay on a bill, a pr proposed bit of legislation, and how some regrettable actions are done. They're done on a dare. You could re regret actions you took on a dare. Scale note looks like sol, as in do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, from the, uh, what's called solfege, which is 
that assigning of these words to relative pitches of a musical scale. Okay, what about this? One handling personal injury claims. Well, a lawyer of some sort. Oh, and that, that finishes our Teletubby. So la, la La with four A's in total. So there we go. La La. I mean, La La sounds perfectly plausible as the name of a Teletubby. So there we go. Okay, one hand. Are they still around? Do they still have those? I have no idea. Teletubbies. If they still produce Teletubby material. Anyway, one handling personal injury claims. Oh, I don't know. Let's look elsewhere. Clergy house, a rectory. Um, so that was at least a bit more straightforward. Sound at the door, a, a rap at the door, a knock on the door. And a Yale student. This is an Eli. This is a term used to refer to um, people who attend Yale University or have attended Yale University. And I think it refers to the founder of Yale. Elihu Yale, I think. Um, I think that's where that comes from. Et blank and others. Et Ali and et Ali he and others. Sorry, I'm pro probably just massacring all kinds of pronunciations at the moment uh, in today's video. But anyway, Latin for and others. And then switches gears as in a business strategy. Pivots is often used in that sense to mean change business strategy. And then a civil right, of course, a civil lawyer is, is one who handles personal injury claims, e.g., as opposed to, for instance, a, a criminal a criminal attorney. So uh, there we go. Okay, now we have to finish this off. I don't have any other help, do I? So court material. Oh, what do I do here? Margarine, whose ads once featured a talking tub. How on earth am I going to figure that out? And what was this again? Sparkle. To sparkle is to... Are these certainly correct? I mean, I would think so. Sparkle. Ah, okay. <laughs> what do I do? Um, I checked what I have already. Part of a foot. Arch. Okay, well, if ARC is correct, arch is certainly correct. I mean, similarly, I would say if makeshift has ADH at the beginning, I don't see how it could possibly not be ad hoc. Ponder. Is there anything else this could be mull? You mull something over? You mute, yeah. That might even be better than muse, actually, although I think muse would have been perfectly acceptable, but, but mull might be better. If that were the case, what would this be? Court material. A... Oh, oh, right. Not a court of law, but a tennis court. It could be a clay court. Some tennis matches are played on clay. So that this would be UCLA almost certainly, which is what I sort of thought it was going to be. I should have just put that in. I should have just tried that out and seen, seen what happened, but I didn't. Um, casual greeting holla, maybe. And then, boy, I, do, I just don't know this. So sparkle, oh, pep maybe, like show some pep, show some sparkle, that sort of thing. Elon, uh, Marjorie News ads once featured a talking tub. I guess parquet, I don't recognize that. Is that, there it is, it's okay. Well, good, it worked out in the end. So that was that was a very tough finish for me down there. That was surprised, that was pretty surprising. Um, really struggled that. And UCLA, I think this could be tough for someone without context of, I don't know, any, I guess any of the possible related angles into this, which to me was sort of just, for me was a list of schools from the University of California system, but for someone else could be US university level sports. But if you didn't have any of that, 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 could, that would be tough. You'd have to get it from the crosses. Um, anyway, there we go. We have our, <laughs> our fairly absurd uh, initial here theme tying together improbably William H. Macy, Alfred E. Newman, Edward R. Murrow, and Chuck E. Cheese, all of whom have lost their middle initials to uh, allow for their names to sound sort of weird when pronounced, and then filtered into our revealer to create the initial here directive. So there we go. And that's that's sort of, it's sort of doubly clever because, you know, the initials are here, they're physically here in, at this place in the grid, but they're also the letters. And 
comprise the word here. So that's just a nice little, nice little uh, bit of construction from uh, Jeff Stillman. And there we have it, a puzzle that went reasonably well for most of it and then gave me some trouble at the end, but finished it off. How did you manage? Let me know. I'm always curious. And um, I actually don't think I had any clues from yesterday that needed to be read and I do need to be taking taken off. So apologies if um, there were corrections that came in late that I that I didn't see. But for now, I, I'm off. So I'll be back tomorrow, of course, for the Thursday puzzle. Could be a more intricate or surprising or deceptive theme. We'll have to see. It's often what happens on Thursday. Uh, and I hope you join me for it. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Wednesday. Take care. Uh-huh.